welcome to another video. If you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Irit. I'm a watercolor and mixed media artist and on this channel I share everything watercolor related and some mixed media. And today I want to share with you the supplies that I took, which watercolors, which pencils and which pastels I took with me to Greece. If you want to see everything that I took, kind of talking about what I used, how I used it, what was good, what was not, check out the video that I posted last week. I will link it here and you can also find it on my channel. Uh, but today I just want to show you the colors so you can see. Maybe it will inspire you to create your own uh, travel kit or just, you know, a palette um, unrelated to travel. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave me a comment, and of course, subscribe. I would love to have you here. Now, the touchy subject <laughs> that is also exciting, but also a touchy subject, is that I used my, hopefully soon to come and available to everyone who wants it, uh, my second stamp set called Sketchbook Essentials. I mostly used it uh, for the this purpose which I'll share with you exactly what I did but I also used a little bit of my first uh, release which was the watercolor workbook set um, this one is kind of more intended for creating um, you know uh, color swatches for your paints and then your palettes and swatching your watercolors and mixing them and all that and then the second set is more intended for just like creating these fun layouts in your scratch, scratch book, sketchbook or logbook uh, to keep like a fun, easy reference. Or you can use it however you like. I will just show you a few ways that I enjoyed using it. And yeah, I'll start with this uh, page in my sketchbook and I used in this set, I included one, this is one stamp that has six uh, small pans. And in the original set, there was a single stamp for the kind of half pan size and then a single one for the full pan size. These are not uh, true size, first of all, because mostly size vary uh, between brands, but also because I just wanted it a little bit bigger just to give me more, give me and you more space to actually see the color. However, because this set is designed with like a sketchbook and um, on the go theme kind of, uh, I wanted to create kind of a smaller one with six uh, pens so you can quickly stamp it and one idea that I have that I just still haven't been able to complete to show you is to stamp it on a page because it's one stamp it's super fast so you don't have to stamp it six times and you can kind of create a little color story for your sketch but I'm still working on more ideas and samples uh, but the point of this video is just to show you which supplies I took so and I swatched everything for you so you can actually see the colors because I think that's what we all want to do. Sometimes it's very difficult when you have, you know, like a pencil range, like a color range of a certain pencil or pastel of like a hundred colors. Sometimes it just feels overwhelming and it's easy, um, easier to find colors that you like if someone you know, just shows you, highlights a few colors and you can say, oh, I really, really like that. And then it's easier to pick up a few. So this is just like the starting page and there is a swatch here of all the colors in my palette. This is the palette that I took. It has 16 wells and I added two full pans. Uh, I talk about more about the palette and the options and everything in that other video I mentioned. So today I just want to talk to you about which colors I actually took. Uh, but this is like a really nice way of presenting it, I think, and also starting your sketchbook. And here you can see all the colors, so I'll tell you about them. I like to carry white. I have the Rembrandt Opaque White here. I love Naples yellow, so I have the Schmincke Naples yellow here. It's my favorite. It's the most kind of buttery Naples yellow that I have found. 
This is the Daniel Smith Nickel Azo Yellow and the Core Quinacridone Gold. I kind of go back and forth between these two, um, kind of fall in love with one and fall out of love with the other. Currently I'm more in a Quinacridone Gold phase, but I spent a lot of time last year <laughs> uh, using just Nickel Azo Yellow and I didn't want to even look at the Quinacridone Rose uh, Gold, so there you go. Uh, I love, love, love this color. This is Lucas Naples Yellow Reddish. And as you can see, this is Naples Yellow. And then this one, I don't know, I just really, really love it. It has a little bit of opacity and it creates gorgeous kind of corally, peachy colors when I mix it with my pinks. So that's why I love to include it. Speaking of pinks, I have three in my palette and one is the Van Gogh Carmine which is, it, I really find that with some paints they look very different on different papers and I feel that actually on this paper it kind of dulls the color but on my usual cellulose papers the Van Gogh Carmine is very very vibrant and bright and I love it. An all-time favorite, a great color to have in any palette, limit, palette limited or not, is Quinacridone Rose. This is the Daniel Smith version and I love it. It's very um, lively and vibrant. My Ride or Die Pink is still the Holbein Bright Rose. As you can see, it's a lot more bluish than these two. These two on this paper look very, very similar. This one is like, looks a little bit, still looks a little bit uh, more bluish than this. Uh, with these two, I kind of go back and forth. Sometimes I'm into one of them and sometimes the other, but this is always, always a favorite. Then we have, I decided to include Ultramarine Rose in this palette. I'm always kind of, I like the color, but I never seem to manage to like include it in my paintings. So I feel like in every palette you set up, you need to have like one or two colors that you're not sure how you feel about them and kind of give them a chance. And that's the case with this one. Again, one of my all-time favorites, Cobalt Violet. This is the Rembrandt version. It's not perfect. In my opinion, the perfect Cobalt Violet is by Windsor & Newton. But um, they're not vegan and I am trying to use vegan supplies. And so I switched to Rembrandt. And when I say I'm trying is that sometimes I forget to check on everything that I buy and yeah, and so mistakes happen. Or I do admit that sometimes if something contains like a very small amount of beeswax or something like that, I might still consider buying it. Um, this is the Rembrandt Lavender. I think it's the Rembrandt actually, I'm not sure. I really feel like lavenders we're all kind of created equal and it's not a color worth spending like a high price tag. That has been my experience. It's usually just ultramarine pigment BP29 mixed with white and ultramarine is not a uh, expensive pigment. It's usually in the series one in all brands. So just buy what is local to you and what you like. I think they're all kind of similar. Um, this is the Rembrandt French Ultramarine. It's my favorite ultramarine. I'm in Europe. Rembrandt is European. It comes in huge tubes. The price is right. It granulates beautifully. I really, really like it. The Daniel Smith Amazonite Genuine is a color that I really love and is relatively new in my collection. And I haven't been able to really kind of explore what it does. So I decided it was a good opportunity. Sadly, I didn't paint a lot in this uh, trip, but I had good intentions and I included it in my palette. This is Cobalt Teal. To be perfectly honest, it's a color that I have in all my palettes and I have yet to meet a Cobalt Teal I didn't like. Usually it's called Cobalt Teal or, or Cobalt Turquoise. Daniel Smith calls theirs Cobalt Teal Blue. Some brands have a cobalt turquoise that is not this color, that is slightly more muted. So you wanna look usually for pigment PG50. And I think almost all of the like artist quality brands make a turquoise or teal 
from this pigment and I personally love it in small amounts, but I love it. Then we have here my current favorite green, Daniel Smith Olive Green. Really, really like their version. It's a multi-pigment one, but I feel like it has a depth that a lot of like gold greens don't have. And so that has been kind of the recent green that I include in my palettes. And then for the neutrals, I went with Daniel Smith Hematite Burnt Scarlet Genuine, which is just the most special, beautiful color. You can see it here. It has this granulation and it has like its base color is this kind of pale pink. It's really, really beautiful. Every time I swatch it, I go gaga over it. It gives me the feels. And yet I have still kind of struggled to incorporate it into my color stories, but I really want to because it's such a beautiful color. Um, unfortunately, again, on this trip, I didn't manage to, you know, solve that mystery and find the color story that works uh, with this. This is the Rembrandt Dusk Pink. The Dusk series from Rembrandt are basically like oxide black or granulating black mixed with other pigments and my favorite is the pink and the yellow. I don't like the purple and green that they have and yeah the yellow I have been dusk yellow it's more of like um, a green actually like an earthy green. I have used that a lot in the last year but um, didn't include it in this palette and then moon glow. I know I know there's been a lot of talk about the light fastness um, issues with this color and yet I love it and I'm too lazy to mix my own versions and so I use it when I will be out of it I may consider a different version but for now I just adore this color it's kind of my go-to dark color and then I can neutralize it with some of my like other um, mostly the yellows I use to neutralize it and create a really neutral dark color and that is my limited palette that I took on this trip and I think I would be quite satisfied with this selection. So let's move on to the pastels that I took. I'll just go over the colors and you can see here very clearly the uh, samples. So this is the Neo Color 1s that I took and this is the Neo Color 2. I prefer to work with the 1 uh, because they are water resistant and that's the way that I like to use them. However, the color range of the Neo Color 2 is much better and so, and you you kind of need to work um, to like m try to agitate them a little bit so that they move around. They're not like the Carandash uh, pencils, for example, the um, Museum Aquarelle, which I'll get to in a sec. So I'm okay with using them kind of in the same way that I use the one and just add the few colors that I really like that they don't have in the Neo Color 1 color range. I don't know why. I guess these are much more popular than the ones that are not water soluble. And so the color range is not as good. But yeah, I'll show you the colors. This is ochre. Most of these are from the basic set, but I did add a few. This is gold, even though it's green, they call it gold. This is Malish, Malachite, I want to say, green, turquoise blue, light blue, ultramarine, purple, scarlet, pink, salmon, Sahara yellow, and yellow. And then from the um, Neo Color 2, and you can see I added, just like activated the pigment after I colored in the stamp and then did a little swatch here. Um, with this, you won't be able to do that because these are not water soluble. But these are. Uh, we have jade green, a color that I love. It's kind of a minty green and it doesn't come in this. Sky blue, again, it's kind of a lavender version of the pastel. Ultramarine pink, very pretty. Violet purple, I used to love this kind of color. Kind of fell out of love with it in the last couple of years, but it's still a nice pastel. This one is beautiful, raspberry red. Then we have orangish yellow and Chinese green, which is kind of like a limey or lemony, lemony yellow. And yeah, so these are the pastels that I took with me. And then the pencils, 
these are the ones that are not water soluble and I have, I'm not sure I swatched all of them, but I think I swatched most of them. So we have here, I should have written the, the brand, but I think we can figure it out. So we have here the Spanish orange, this is this one. Then we have Nectar, I really love, I don't know, Prisma, Prisma color pencils. Um, I agree they're not the highest quality pencils, but I don't think anyone compares with their like color range. Their color range is fantastic. The colors are vibrant, really, really nice to um, play with. This one is Anthra, Anthra, Anthra Quinoid Pink. This is a Luminance Carandash pencil. It's this color. It's kind of like a warm try to zoom you in so you can see the colors it's kind of this yeah it's my kind of color this kind of corally salmon color I would say then we have rose yeah this is rose from Prismacolor then we have hot pink oh great the camera cut me off Okay, let's hope I reached this step. So the blues were Caribbean Sea and Cobalt Blue here. And then this one I didn't swatch. This is Luminous Red from Holbein. I've spoken about it many, many times in the past. On camera, it doesn't, you don't see the like fluorescent aspect of it, uh, but it is in real life. So what you see, it's like a dull version of the real thing. And then we have, oh, I love this color. This is Turquoise Green from Derwent Lightfast. It's just the, it's like a cobalt teal in pencil form is what it is. And what else do we have here? We have another luminance pencil. This is ochre, green ochre. So kind of like an olive green. What are you? Artichoke. Some of these colors I picked because my daughter was with me when I was trying to pick pencils, so I couldn't say no to all of her choices. <laughs> but you'll see the next page. I think you can tell which one I didn't pick. Uh, this one is Artichoke, also kind of this earthy gold green. And then this one is Yellow Ochre. It's the color that I painted the pencils, uh, like bodies here. And you can see it's kind of a yellow ochre color. And then this one, I don't know why I picked it. It's pretty. It's called Periwinkle. I don't think I swatched it. There you go. It's a little bit of muted, kind of like a sl slightly muted lavender. So these are all the um, water kind of resistant or regular pencils that I took. And then where are and okay yeah here i put the pencils that i took that are water soluble as you can see they are mostly the museum aquarelle pencils by Carandash. i think these are the best watercolor pencils that i've tried and yeah it's just like a joy to uh, first draw with them and they are so much more pigmented and like soft than other watercolor pencils I've tried and then also the colors are gorgeous and also when you activate them you get a really nice payoff and intensity so this is gold chameleon yellow it's this this is anthraquinoid pink again like a kind of a salmon color then we have this one it, this one is from Albrecht Dürer from Faber Castell. It's their artist grade watercolor pencil. It's a great pencil. You know, the Germans, they make good stuff. And still, it's, it's not as nice. Um, it's nice when you activate it, but you really, I mean, you should try like both and see what I mean. This is much harder. 
So I don't know, maybe if you want fine lines or you want like a harder lead, you would prefer the Albrecht Dürer. I personally really, really prefer the uh, Museum Aquarelle. I have a full set, I think. No, maybe I have the polychromos. Yeah, I think I have a polychromo set. Uh, I don't have a full set of these. I have a few and I just prefer the Carandash ones. So next one from Carandash, we have purplish red and you can see these are quite similar. This one is a little bit more vibrant, but yeah, just uh, so much nicer in my opinion. This one is, it doesn't have a name. The number is 106. It's kind of this eggplant color. Then we have sepia 50%. Then we have an intense color that I picked. I'm not sure why, this is not my color at all. It's red oxide. The intense pencils, the difference between them and watercolor pencils is that once you activate them with water and let it dry, they're permanent. So really great for working in layers. If you don't want to disturb the pencil, then intense are a good option. But I like the pencil itself a lot less than the Museum Aquarelle. It's apples and oranges, but just the experience of painting with it. And also, I'm not too crazy about their color range. I don't know. It's like missing a few bright colors for me. Green Ochre, one of my favorites. This is already Calendash again. This is the color that Lily picked. This is in intense, vivid green. I don't like this green at all. And then these two gorgeous colors. The top one is Beryl Green from Carandash Museum Aquarelle, this one. And then this one is, again, this is like cobalt teal in <laughs> pencil form. This is light malachite green, and these are gorgeous. So again, I use like the pencil stamp to stamp this here just to make it kind of fun. Of course, you don't need the stamp. I mean, it's not available right now, but when it will be available, you can do these things without the stamp. You can just draw this, but obviously with the stamp, it's like fast and you don't have to draw it. Some of the pens that I took, I took the Derwent line makers and yeah, just kind of used one of the pen stamps, water brush, and then a couple of other pencils that I have. And I think, I think that's everything. Yeah, I showed you this and I showed you this. I also have a, a couple of brush stamps so you can stamp them and write which brush, brushes you took with you. And then a few cute little um, bits and bobs. We have the washi tape here, sorry, the pencil sharpener and yeah, just a few more uh, stamps, which uh, this one I also like, the paper clip. I will talk about these extensively when you can get the set. So I hope you enjoyed this swatching video or talking about <laughs> swatches and I will see you soon in another one. Take care. Bye-bye.